The Industry Insider is only available at Promo Corner, the leader in digital marketing for the promotional products industry. Each Monday, they discuss, dissect, and debate a single issue impacting the world of promotional marketing from every industry perspective. Now, it's time for Promo Corner's Industry Insider. Welcome to another episode of the Industry Insider, your promotional products podcast where you can get all the nerdy news you need to know about. My name is Jeff Franklin, National Accounts Manager with Hidwear USA, and I'm joined today by three other lovely folks. But look, this fine broadcast is going to be brought to you today by Tervis Promos, uh, our good friends over at Tervis. They've been around since 1946 and are celebrating 75 years in business, started with their classic line. Uh, they've got sleek styles that make perfect for the active and on-the-go lifestyle. Tervis is the original double-wall insulated drinkware that keeps cold drinks cold and reduces condensation. Backed by a made-for-life guarantee, Tervis is the original customizable double-wall insulated drinkware that keeps hot drinks hot or cold drinks cold. Available in several sizes, including a 16-ounce mug, 16-ounce or 24-ounce tumbler, and a 24-ounce water bottle. They're made from Triton plastic, made in America, lifetime warranty. They are dishwasher and microwave safe and BPA-free. Highly recommend that you head over to TervisPromos.com as soon as you're listening to the, or as soon as you're done listening to this fine broadcast, uh, and uh, give them a visit uh, and tell them we sent you. Why not? Why don't we say hi to uh, to Meg Erber with SNS Activewear? I, I love the uh, the actual real live background today, Meg. Looks good. <laughs> yeah, a couple minutes ago, everything just stopped working, so we had to, you know, make some adjustments on the fly. But why, that's why it we is. pregame, right? Yeah, that's why we pregame. But got blah, blah, blah. got a lot of stuff going on this week. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing this shirt that blends in with my face and my hair, as you said, but. Uh, <laughs> It was so a really rude. cool shirt that I received from Bella Canvas on Earth Day, and they're having their big virtual experience tomorrow. I'm really excited about it. Going to get to hear from like Megan Spire, who we had on the show a couple weeks ago. Um, oh, and what you guys would be interested in uh, the keynote speaker is Gary V. So I'm I'm really yeah. really yeah. That's Bella cool. Canvas has got Gary V doing something. Yeah, so Never I'm excited. All day, Bella Canvas, so we'll see how that goes, but yeah. Wow, that's messed up. All right, well, that's enough shameless plugging for you, Meg Herbert. Why don't we go to Stephen McFadden with Perfect Promotions and more. How are you doing? What's up? Doing all right, man. Glad to hear it. I love how about it. yourself, Jeff? Love the tinted windows, man. I'm doing all right. I'm oh, yeah. Good. We're working out pretty well. Yeah. We are joined today by special guest Javier Melendez. How in the hell is Javier today? What's up? No, pretty good. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, looking forward to it. I'm glad we were able to get up and running live. So let's get rolling. Yeah, man. We got the uh, the TikTok guy with us here today. You know, we're excited about it. But look, today's topic, we're going to talk about how to really navigate this new hybrid situation that we're in. Uh, obviously, with the, the, virtual, uh, the virtual world that we've lived in the last uh, year or so, um, is, is going to start to clash with in-person and live events. And we're really going to just talk about how, you know, what that looks like, you know, sort of what our, uh, you know, viewpoint is on that from, from each of us and, and really get into that. Uh, we've got some really great, um, really great content for you today. So excited about it. Javier, before we do that though, why don't we, uh, you know, it's customary for us to give our special guest a good three to four minutes, uh, to tell us all things Javier Melendez. So why don't you jump into that? Tell us how you got started in the promotional products industry and what you've been up to since. Uh, all right. I'll, uh, uh, the super condensed version is I've been in the industry since my freshman year of high school, attending a regional vocational technical high school on uh, graphic communication. So I learned about literally the ink presses, printing giant rolls of paper all the way down to screen printing and stuff. Um, can't, I The one chip on my shoulder is my senior year. I uh, was in a competition. It's called Skills USA for vocational folks. And I missed going to nationals by half a point for Massachusetts. So that's always been the chip on my shoulder, as you can tell. And then uh, since then, I've kind of just grown in the industry. You know, I've been blessed to have a few mentors in the industry. Um, the last few years, more people have kind of found out about me because I've, uh, I got a little bit more involved, found my voice a little bit more. Um, I started doing TikToks and then clubhouse and people are asking me all the time things and learning that I'm really into tech and really into looking into different ideas and ways like, you know, the SaaS community and stuff. How can we innovate that with promo? And it's just kind of blown up and I'm like, I'm just the guy out in Western Mass. Literally, there's two farms next to my house. Like, but, you know, people ask me all the time, like, you know, your TikToks and things like that. And I'm like, it's just having fun and, you know, and, and it's grown and it's opened up a lot of opportunities for me. So 
Um, but yeah, I love promo. I've been in promo almost my whole adult life. Uh, if you want to call it an adult life and then, uh, you know, we, uh, we've gone from there. So that's me. That's the nutshell. And I did it in two minutes, Jeff. Wow. <laughs> I, hey, look, we appreciate the promptness. It's, uh, it's a nice treat. Uh, first of all, Meg Gerber, I've got to address the hair. All right. Tim Hill says your hair looks perfect. All right. So uh, no, no need for concern there. Thank you, Tim Hill for chiming in on that. Uh, Listen, Javier, I've got a question for you because you said you started in your freshman year of high school. Was that correct? Yeah. Yep. So what What exactly were you doing your freshman year in high school? So the way a vocational schools work, you know, they teach you trades and stuff. So the freshman year, we would learn things about printing presses, you know, how to feed paper into them, um, graphic communication. So Adobe very early on. And then we, you know, this was back in 2000 and seven 2008 uh, I graduated in 2010 and literally I got to the point where in my shop I was one of the only people qualified like the, it was the shop teacher um, the assistant shop teacher and like me where I could actually go in get gears out of the press I, don't, I remember one time my mother was so mad that I had worn my new jeans to school but we had a press breakdown I ended up coming home covered in blue ink and for those that don't know cyan ink is the worst to come out you'll look like a smurf for days my new jeans that I had worn were absolutely destroyed my mother was so pissed anywho but so that's how I started and you you just grow so did you actually know it was the promotional products industry though when you were first exposed to the printing presses and all that good stuff like did we you learned idea of what it was or yeah we learned all aspects of the trade including pad printing screen printing embroidery through the the, the program and it's awesome. cool because now some vocational schools are actually bringing embroidery machines and screen printing machines into yes. their um operations instead of just like the textbook that's incredible. I don't know what vocational school you went to, but kudos to them because we actually need more education about our industry and the curriculum, whether it's high school or college, it doesn't matter. But uh, I think that's fantastic. And that's why I was asking the question because that's actually a really rare thing to hear. So uh, yeah, shout out Baypath. Yeah. And the only person that we know that was destined by <laughs> from the time they were 13. <laughs> no, but that is really, that is really good that they're teaching those trades like Adobe. That's so beneficial to understand how to be able to mm. navigate that and be able to edit and just do your own virtuals and that, and learning that at that age is you can do anything with it. I'm yeah. there's a lot of giving back there. Maybe we can tie in later on <laughs> it, it's something just like just to be able to, I don't know. It's incredible. I really, I think that's just awesome. Sorry. <laughs> no, awesome. <laughs> All right. So why don't we launch into the topic? Like I said, we're going to talk about the hybrid environment that we're currently in or in, and coming into and, uh, you know, sort of what you think that looks like. So uh, we'll just sort of do a round table and, and, and ask each everybody or ask each person uh, what their particular viewpoint on it is. I mean, um, Stephen, what do you think as far as this hybrid situation? I mean, how do you how do you see this playing out over the next six months, year, two years down the road? Yeah, and I, I kind of want to um, I'll give you my my take and kind of kick it to the different perspectives here. So, my my take on this whole hybrid situation is it's more. And this is my opinion, and you guys can jump in on this. I think it's going to affect suppliers more than distributors. Um, I don't know that as a distributor, I'm as impacted by the lack of being in person as suppliers are. Um, I feel like our, our approach to sales and the way things were even pre-COVID were very much hybrid as it is. You know, I have geographical challenges that are even greater, I think, than a supplier in some regards. You know, a lot of suppliers have territories. And, you know, my sales base can go all over the country, if not international. And there's people I've never met in my life that are my customers. And, you know, that whether that's being sending them things or doing video calls as it is to stay in person with them, um, I, you know, I'm pulling, I don't need to show them an entire catalog, right? I, I'm guiding through decisions and what they need and showing them limited selection based on the criteria, whereas as a you know, distributor trying to buy stuff from a supplier, I have to see what you have like as a whole in order to know if any one of those pieces matches, you know, the need for my customer. So I, I Well, it's kind of I funny think, that you say that because yeah. I think that's maybe potentially one of the ways where it could affect you is that, you know, because we're in a hybrid situation and you're True. not 
much product in person. Now you've got to, you've got to, you know, up your shipping costs with all the samples because most suppliers aren't shipping samples out at no cost. Right. I mean, you're, they'll give you the sample for free most times, but not usually charging or not usually giving you the, the shipping for free. Right. Uh, yeah, true. And, you know, we, we don't mind paying for samples. I know that's, <laughs> that's been a, a discussion at a previous uh, podcast, but I don't know that that's changed. Like, I don't think that's different for us. We, we were already doing that, if that makes sense. So um, will, will we have to maybe get a few more things in and ship a few more things out? That, that's possible. But, you know, even over the past, you know, year now, which is a pretty good sample size, um, it hasn't really increased that much. I mean, to be honest, I, I think we were already doing what we were doing pre-COVID now. And I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe the bigger issue is because we can't see as much our ideas are limited, you know, so that maybe that's more of where it'll eventually affect the supplier base. But I, I think I, the other I, thing too is that we, yeah. we, had, we had Expo in, in 2020. That's true. You know, yeah. So maybe, maybe, I mean, we haven't had like a full year where you haven't had like a, a real big trade show. I mean, this would probably be the first mm -hmm. year, but there's even stuff coming technically down the road. You've got ASI Chicago in July, which, you know, we're going to have uh, a, somebody from ASI on to talk about that as well. But, um, you know. Yeah, there is an idea drain. I think that's something that we, we always look forward to in January is getting just pumped full of energy and ideas. Right. Yep. And we, we did miss that this year, but, you know, heck, we're, we're three months removed from when we would have already been to that trade show. So now we're 15 months removed from the last trade show we've been to. Yep. What, you know, we're, we're pretty idea drained as it is, but you know, the websites, the way they are now, everyone put tons of energy and money and resources into developing their websites. There's uh, I could pick a day of the week and probably find an online trade show or an exhibit to go to. So it, I've been leaning a little bit more on suppliers to help me come up with those ideas as well. Inventory is probably the biggest challenge we have. Um, so I've actually been doing things <laughs> a little bit reverse. I've been saying, Hey, you have lots of new pieces. I need 2000 or something. What do you have that you have 2000, like almost going in a backwards. Um, but yeah, so that's, that, that's kind of my distributor take on it. I mean, I, I don't know if Javier, do you feel that's pretty I mean, accurate? I mean, TikTok. or I made TikToks about inventory and they're actually one of them is going viral right now on, um, on uh, Instagram, but no. So I, th I think, yeah, suppliers are affected because they're not going to be able to produce as much. Right. So you look at some of the restrictions, especially like, so in Canada, there's restrictions on people even being able to go out, out, uh, after, after dark. Right. So they have to compete with that. They have to compete with their restrictions. If the forklift operator who pulls inventory, comes down with COVID and he carpools with two people who work on the line, that's three people there down, you know, uh, and so that affects production schedules. And the other thing that people don't realize suppliers have had to, and I know some have said it, they've had to go unproductive in some of their workflows to keep workers safe, right? They've had to space machines out. They've had to do a lot more um, work to keep people safe. That being said, as a distributor, you know, I actually am hybrid right now. So I work from home. I live a little uh, over uh, almost two hours each way drive to um, the office. I still make that commute um, once every week because being in office, we can communicate, we can share ideas, ping ideas off of each other. Um, same thing with, uh, you know, the in-person. I went to, I call them the trunk or treats. They're the tailgate shows, mm -hmm. but most people don't have <laughs> tailgates. So, you know, I call them trunk or treats, but mm -hmm. I was at one and I had a great idea for a, a client and, and from that show, and I had a half hour conversation with one uh, rep and I'm like, okay, what about this idea? Let's talk about that. And we, we, we talked about things, those conversations that I, I'll be honest, we, ha we didn't on a zoom call three weeks prior. So it's like, it's one of those things. I think with hybrid, there's a need to have the in-person face-to-face. I actually just had my first in-person client meeting yesterday and what a great experience we bounced off i took seven pages of notes it was a great experience but you don't get that necessarily on a zoom call sometimes <laughs> and it's like oh yeah this is coming up whatever and you don't you don't get that creativity when everybody's kind of just whiteboarding ideas so it's important to make sure that you know we're keeping cognizant of the inventory aspects we know what the challenges are we know things are going to blow up um, everyone, I call it the COVID dethaw. Once everybody's kind of opened up and all the restrictions come out, everyone's going to need stuff tomorrow. 
and the suppliers aren't going to have it. I mean, some of the supplier stuff is lost in the ocean. It fell off the, it fell off the boat. It literally fell off the boat. So, you know, there's those things we have to deal with. And then some of the customers are not knowing that there's 35 cargo containers sitting off, uh, off the ports right now. They don't understand that, you know, somebody posted in one of the Facebook groups. Oh, I haven't heard about that pull up the wall street journal, pull up, you know, the New York times it's out there and just educating people. I think distributors have to educate people, Mm -hmm. but suppliers also have to understand that for us, we have to be those educators as well. And helping us with the tools is another great thing. Some suppliers have done that really well. And that's helped me educate people when I've talked to them. Yeah, I have to agree. It's something that with both of you guys said, Stephen, um, I don't remember what they were, but you, you were, <laughs> you, you, how it's easier for you. You have, oh yeah, I know now you guys have already been doing this for the last year, basically a hybrid situation, you know, half your customers, you had to pivot. You didn't have a choice. If you wanted to reach any of your customers, you had to be virtual. Okay. So now you're in the office. So that's kind of hybrid and virtual um, or in-person and virtual meaning hybrid. So where we're coming from as suppliers that we've been, for the most part, us outside sales reps, unless you're in the South, we have been home for the last year. Mm. So all of my customers where they were more accustomed to me, like they would email me knowing that I'm on the road all day long in meetings all day, we're a little bit more patient. Um, so now I've kind of trained them or they've trained me, I don't, whatever, but I'm now, you know, replying, replying, even though I'm in meetings all day, I can still take a couple minutes and then reply to those emails in between meetings. So my, you know, the, the wait time is a lot less, but now like, let's say I had back-to-back meetings or I had to drive an hour for one meeting, the meeting's an hour, hour and a half, and then an hour back. That's almost four hours. I'm out of the office for one meeting because 90% of my customers mm-hmm. are in sales, you know, or not in sales. I'm sorry. Like more on the ASI side versus screen printing side. So there's, they have that choice to work remote. It, it hasn't changed for them. We're up in the Northeast. So the problem that I'm having is trying to manage, like, how am I supposed to go back out on the road in two months when my workload from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. is already like keeping me at the computer. And it's insane. Like, I don't, I don't know how I'm supposed to take another four hours for one meeting out of that day, out of that chunk and go on the road. I mean, Meg, it's going to just... happen and we're all going to have to do it, but it's going to have to maybe be like on one day or two days, or yeah. I don't know. I just don't see that four day a week, four customers a day. I just don't see that happening. Anything. You, you just mentioned something that I, I wanted to ask at some point, maybe this is a good time for it, but have you guys noticed with this new hybrid thing too, that normal working hours and days are just blown out the window? Is that, is that <laughs> a, something you guys are seeing? Like I'm getting text messages like on the weekends and emails at, at 11 PM and I, it's, it's all over the place. Is that, is that just me or that's everybody? <laughs> so one thing I do want to say is, you know, I think it's important to just kind of like set that expectation sometimes. And the other thing oh, yeah. is like with, you know, like Meg, what you're talking about, like your hype video yesterday, like you were FaceTiming me while, you know, you were holding a rack. Like that's a whole, that's a legit thing that's going to happen now, but people need to understand like, okay, there's, there might be an inside contact. If you need a quick response versus the outside rep, you know, the same thing with distributors, I might not get to you because I'm literally driving home two hours, you know, on the mass pike, uh, you know, at five o'clock and those who know that will sympathize with me. So, (laughs) you know what I mean? Those, those are things that we can't help, but at the same time, it doesn't change just because I can't get to you right this second. Doesn't mean I don't care about your business. It just means I literally am trying to be safe and not kill somebody on the road. Mm -hmm. It's almost like we've trained people because our work hours were so flexible when we were at home in the beginning that we are available all the time. And we're almost going to have to untrain people or retrain people. And the Amazon effect. It's it's, it's it's hard to do that. Uh, I I know as a supplier rep, (laughs) I don't think much has changed. Usually we've been doing that anyways. I mean, I I know we've had conversations about, you know, answering emails at eight, nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night as well. Like even prior to COVID, um, but yeah, let, I mean, Meg, I'm going to sort of reiterate, what you reiterate, reiterate if I can talk, uh, on what you had said. I mean, as a supplier, you know, just handling the load that we're currently handling and then trying to squeeze in the in-person time, I think that's, mm. that's going to be the real tricky part. Um, and then, you know, from, I guess, supplier management side of things, like why would they want you to go back out on the road if you're having the success, you know, 
more success in in, in often uh, in some cases um, than what you would be on the road. You know, yeah. so um, it's because we need to see the sizes and feel the feel the quality of the hats and see okay, is the bell canvas? You know how oh. that's gonna fit. That's where Stephen's shipping costs uh, increase. <laughs> <laughs> when I just tell you and you take my word for it, Javier, because <laughs> Hey, I wear a three XL. I've posted many times. Three XLs need to be part of giveaway t-shirts as well. Just saying I'm putting that out there for the industry. You know, <laughs> you know when I do large quantity coats, they always do. It's, a, it's, it's, I'm shocked sometimes the quantities, whether they're like 25 or like 400, I'm like, wow, like I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it more now, but it's because I think <laughs> so many people, this is, we're on this like print on demand type environment as well because we that's what it's happened and people now are ordering their size versus um someone pre-ordering and guessing their sizes so i think that's happening a lot more as well um and jeff there was there was one thing that you said too but um it's it's why why would we go back out on the road you're right if we're having that success here and, and it is right we do need to have that in person but i think as an outside sales rep, I'm going to be a little bit more picky about where I'm spending that time. Um, am I yeah. Sometimes I've always preached regional shows, always do. I'm like, I wore two caps, you know, and, but right now I think I, they asked me to do a regional show um, a couple weeks ago and it was a Wednesday and I already had, I had the podcast. I had three meetings already lined up and I'm like, I mean, I could probably do the podcast of the show, but I'm not going to be able to get back in time to do these Zooms. I guess I could do them in my car. And I'm like, this is it's unneeded stress. I'm just going to choose to do these three meetings in my podcast where I'm going to get more reach. I'm going to, you know, have the audience. I'm going to have those meetings back to back rather than go to one show and maybe see a, a handful of my customers where I'm just, I'm getting a lot more done at home. So I think as an outside sales manager, I'm going to be able to a little bit more picky about where I'm spending that time moving sure. forward for sure. I mean, I said, oh, go ahead. What's up from Puerto Rico? Que onda nice. Puerto Rico? What's what's up? Um, Como ta? Como ta? And then uh, Charity chimes in, says 100% uh, agrees with Meg Erber. Already working 12 plus hours a day uh, with virtual. So how do we put in person back in uh, when it's inefficient? One and takes a ton of extra time. How do we even do it? Or how do we even do it before? Well, we did it ineffectively before. Yep. I think, I think is the answer. I mean, that's honestly, all we knew. Well, I wonder too, and maybe you guys have a better picture of this. When things went down, um, there was a lot of downsizing and staff changes. And I used to see that most of my outside had, you know, a dedicated person inside or they had, you know, hey, I'm on the road, but like chat with this person if you just need a quick answer. And that, that there was a lot of those relationships. Some of them still exist, but I'm finding that there's less of those inside people or those inside people are taking more you know, more of the outside people as their, their partner. And I'm just wondering, like, as, as, as meetings come back, there's going to be that, that hiccup period, I feel like, where until it gets to a breaking point on those inside folks, you know, people are going to have to restaff or kind of get back into the swing of things. Um, I don't know. Is that, is that, is that true? Or is that? Well, I'm true? seeing a lot of people are trying to hire I mean, Javier, I'm yeah, sure you okay. can attest to this. I'm seeing a lot. I mean, I was Michelle Bell even posted it on Twitter. Like, people are trying to hire. The problem is, is that a maybe people don't want to work, or unlike us guys, like last year when pandemic hit, we were all at first were like, oh my gosh, we need to see people. What are we gonna do? But we we evolved, we adapted, we we hit the we hit the pavement. Not you know technically, but like doing what we had to do to, you know, keep our jobs, to keep it going, to keep things going. And we worked, we worked so hard. So I don't have that mentality because I don't know what it's like. I, I'm so jealous of, of those people that got to like take time off and spend time with their families and, mm. uh, and make bread. I didn't get to make bread. I barely even had time to go <laughs> shopping for bread. <laughs> so I just, that's, um, there's just, a lot of people are hiring. It's just that people want um, want that more of that hybrid, more of that remote option, which I totally get. I don't know. It's finding that balance, and and that balance to me is um, I have this really cool Bella Canvas shirt on. I have I do have pants on today, y'all. I do, <laughs> and I have some slipper socks. Like that's awesome. It's rad. It makes me happy. But you can't pull a squeegee from your living room. That's the challenge, right? Suppliers are going to have that are having that challenge now. Yes, you could do remote customer service work from your living room. That's that's cool. But the challenge is, is that there's a hiring issue. We lost a lot of great talent. We really yeah. did in, in the in the pandemic. And I know a lot of people say that the ch the challenge is going to be on 
those who are in the industry to train, elevate, and 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 take ownership of certain things. And the the other side of that coin is people need to be willing to take ownership, level up, and 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 grow in the industry as well. So there's two sides to the coin. You said it right, Meg. Some people don't want to work. That's that's just a fact, right? And there's a hundred reasons why I'm not going to get into it. But what one of the big things is that if you want to work, there's opportunities out there. You just have to own it, uh, go get it and, and elevate yourself or, or ask, ask for help. Hey, I want to do this. Hey, cross train. That's one of the things my father taught me very early on. He said, if you ever get the opportunity, he was in the military and he said, you ever get the opportunity cross train. If they're going to give you training, you take the training because that makes you more valuable. And that makes you a harder worker. Um, so there's your PSA lessons for my father. <laughs> I love that. And I, I agree with you with the cross training thing. And I'm going to kind of uh, talk about a jujitsu story very quickly. This half guard was always my thing, you know, my gym, bottom half guard, bottom half guard. But you know what? After training at the same gym for so long, they, they can stop your lockdown. They can stop all your mm-hmm. tricks because they know all your tricks. Okay. I will go, when I used to travel, I would go to other gyms. I would cross train. I would, I would, and so they might be doing half guard a little bit different and I was in Texas once for whatever meeting. And I was like, you know, I'm going to go up to that 10th planet in Sherman. I drove all the way up there. And there was a guy from Nebraska. His name was Derek. He was in there. They did a seminar. I came in. I learned the coolest move. And it's called like the Omaha twist. And then another one that I like, I love it. And these were little things, little tweaks that I took to my game from cross training that I take back to my gym now. And like, bam, I'm just, I kill it every time. So Learn from others. All about that cross training, yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, well, listen, we've got a couple, uh, a couple really good uh, opinions sort of coming through on Facebook, so I want to go through these. Uh, first of all, Tim Hill says that uh, always disagreed and laughed at suppliers who judged a show by the number of scans they received, and I got to agree with you. Uh, doing a show is not necessarily about the number of scans that you have; it's about the quality of the conversations that you're having while you're there. Yes. Uh, first foremost. And then Charity also chimed in and said, Jeff, I think it's about how we define success. If it's the number of calls that we can make uh, and how much sales increase, then stay at home and be efficient makes sense. Let's face it though, we are in this or in these outside sales roles because they fulfill other needs for social socialization and fun. This job is what we started doing because of what it is and what we get uh, to do in addition to what we accomplish for our companies financially. And I agree. Honestly, as a sales rep, that's one of the things that scares me the most about the hybrid situation because I loved my job. I, I still do love my job, but I'm saying I loved what I was doing. And, you know, with things changing, you know, sometimes sometimes change isn't always, you know, the best thing. Uh, change is good. Uh, as a matter of fact, who moved my cheese? We talked about that book uh, not that long ago. It's a really good book. If you haven't read it, it's a quick read, uh, but it talks all about change. So, um, but yeah, anyhow, uh, I just wanted to read those comments and sort of get your guys' feedback on that real quick, and then we can move on. I thought you were actually asking who moved your cheese. I was going to say that's a pretty <laughs> odd question. So you said it was a book. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I, Jeff, I, I that that hit home a little bit because it's like one of my favorite things about what I do <clears throat> can't be achieved in a full um, remote setting. You know, like I loved having random dinners with customers and late evenings with people and trying to, you know, just getting to know them. And that helps you be front of mind. And there's a really easy story I have that I won't tell, but the short version of it is there was a supplier that lived really close to us and they would come by like all the time, like because they were driving past us on the way to other meetings. Our business, not intentionally, just went through the roof with them, right? And yeah, and they left and all of a sudden over a three-year period, it went back down and someone called us three years later, like, you used to do so much business with us. Like, what happened? I'm like, I don't even know. Like it, it was just out of sight, out of mind. We had that relationship. They were always in there, always ready for a project and helping us to get in these random orders. And it's like, that's, that's what's missing, right? Like that's the stuff that you miss out on. Um, you'll still get, maybe you can still get quantity with shotgun and stuff, but those relationships and those, that fun stuff you get to do is, is kind of what's missing. So yeah. One of the biggest things with, with, with being virtual and hybrid, you know, you can send out all the mass market emails you want. You can send out all the, you know, LinkedIn messages and stuff like that. You know, what really 
hit home with a lot of people, the personalized handwritten note, the video message that they were sent, you know, the, the voicemail, those were the, the touches because it, it would help drive the relationship versus the, Hey, we have this, this, this on special this year, this week. It it's having a relationship. And I could tell you starting over fresh this year, you know, relationships have been a biggest help for me than anything else. So definitely this is a relationship driven industry and i know private equity wants to see the data and statistics but like you were saying jeff you know sometimes those relationships that's one of the biggest reasons you get in this job you you know steven you said it the dinners and talking with clients and building those relationships driving deep that's a huge aspect and with hybrid it's going to be really important to keep that in mind even though oh we had such great call numbers and oh we had all these great virtual meeting attendee numbers okay but what's the quality I think once you start having the, that conversation too, don't just look at the, the metrics, look at the conversations. Yeah. yeah, this is a relationship industry. Like, you know, when I used to sell hard goods, I looked around, I'm like, you, every, there was like 10 other suppliers that sold the same shit as I did. It was the same stuff. What made people want to buy from the company I work for, what, you know, or from me is, is because I wasn't selling those products. I was selling myself. I was selling my brand and I'm like, and building that relationship. And it wasn't just like, Hey, let me take your order. It was, you know, it was fun things on social or at these trade shows or EMEs. It was like just taking that time to build that relationship, which I understand now is a big part of that has been taken from us. So as any good salesperson that's been in this industry, you know, you have to adapt, you have to evolve and you have to keep moving forward and, and thinking outside the box. So that traditional way of being an outside salesperson isn't going to be like it was in the future, even though we all loved our job. Nobody's ever heard me say like, oh, I just hate this. Like I loved my, I still love my job. Like, like Jeff said, we, <laughs> we enjoy it. We enjoy our customers. We enjoy our coworkers. Like but it's changed and we just have to effectively figure this out. And I mean, with that being said, do you guys, what do you think that the, um, the value moving forward in an outside salesperson would is, is it going to be like it was before? No, I think, I think you hit it on the head earlier when you were talking about, about balance. You know, I think we were at one opposite end of the spectrum before pre COVID, and now we've been thrown and thrusted completely to the opposite end of the spectrum. And I think we're going to ultimately land in a perfect medium in between. Yeah. I think you're still going to go out, like you had mentioned, Meg, and you're going to see customers, but you're going to be maybe be a little bit more selective as to where you spend that time or how frequently maybe you see uh, folks in person. Um, and then ultimately, you know, you're still going to be doing a lot of the, the inside stuff and being more effective and, and being faster in responses and things like that. And, and that's, that's what my opinion is. Yeah. I don't, I have one account that's all over the country, um, like national account. So we, you know, I set up with a vendor relations person. We have a great relationship and I've now booked out meetings every five to six weeks to not do the full dog and pony because that's old. That's, you know, to bring out like different breakout sessions, make it a half hour meeting. You know, the next meeting we're going to talk about sustainability. This is really big. It's near and dear to my heart. I'm passionate about it and it's what people are talking about. So it's perfect. And then five to six weeks else, I'll see what's going on, you know, but maybe it'll be more about the NFT craze. Super excited about that, which stay tuned. Um, but yeah, like, I think, you know, we have to keep doing that. And I think it's the way to see everybody. And I'm not going to be flying all over the country to see like one or two sales reps that are maybe in Washington and one in Texas. It's five to six weeks on the zoom call for us. So, yeah. Anybody else want to chime in on that with their feedback? I think one of the biggest things with suppliers, especially the outside suppliers, is just the, the reps. You know, like I said, it's a relationship. But, you know, if I have, you know, Jeff coming in to show me hats and, and Meg showing, coming in, I can't get the quality and have the conversations. Okay, what are you seeing out that's working for like my type of clientele? I don't, you guys are on the front lines of knowing and understanding okay, this is what I'm seeing, the trends I'm seeing, you know, the trucker hat might be more beneficial, you know, Meg might see the softer styles more beneficial. That's going towards that relationship that we need to have for us to be successful and us to educate our clients as well and say, look, these are the trends. So that's, that's a huge uh, reason why, you know, I have a few, few suppliers. I text with them all, uh, every week and I'm like, okay, what are you seeing? What's new? What do I need to know? And uh, we have those, those conversations. Yeah. yeah. And, and those relationships, they're going to know who your customers are. They're going to bring those, those ideas. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, just keep that two-way conversation open with your supplier reps. I think that's huge. 
Mm -hmm. Sorry, Jeff, go ahead. That's all right. Nadav Raviv chimed in on Facebook. Love that book talking about move my cheese or who moved my cheese. Uh, nothing can replace the in-person uh, love in user meetings and excited to get back to them uh, to touch and feel our product system is, is almost a must for exceptional sales. It could get expensive and time consuming ordering samples to do meetings virtually. Uh, there is always a way to make uh, both work, which, you know, is on par with sort of what we're talking about. I think we'll find a happy medium. Um, and then Manny uh, from Puerto Rico chimes in says really doesn't matter in Puerto Rico. Uh, it's all about price who will give me the best and cheapest price out there. It's really hard dealing with clients like that when they try when you're trying to make money uh, to live completely understandable. And I mean, in this situation that might might actually benefit you, uh, you know, if folks are spending less on outside sales and more internally, maybe that'll drive prices down. I don't know. So guys, do you have time to do a really quick rapid fire? Sure. We have hard cut off. So we have to do like really quick, really quick. I think we could do one. I haven't thought about one yet, but All right. I, well, you can go next, first then. Next, since, you, uh, since you volunteered, why don't you go ahead? All right. So my rapid fire question to y'all is, are you guys reading any books right now? And if so, what are they? Or what is it? Ooh. I'll go first while you're thinking. Okay. Um, so I usually don't have time to read. So I'll like listen to an audible book. Um, I just my yoga ladies were talking about some books saying it was so good that they didn't even want to get out of the car. And I was like, all right, I got to listen to this. It's called Signs by Laura something or another. Oh my gosh. I'm only, I think on chapter 12, but I, by chapter four, I was crying so hard for it. Like it hurt my chest. It was, it's really, it's all about being open-minded and, and looking at, and looking for signs. And I, it's, it was, it's incredible. So I'm talking about it to everybody that'll listen. Highly recommend. Um, so not currently reading one, uh, but I, I, I also like the audio, audio books. Uh, I use Audible and um, one that actually Nick, uh, the president of Hidware USA mentioned uh, to me that I should read and it's my next read. I actually have it in Audible now, but it's called The Untethered Soul. Um, so that'll be my next read. Hard to really give you any feedback on it because I haven't started okay. it yet, but that's my next read. Yeah, I'll go next because I'm actually I was looking on Audible. I'm like, OK, which one am I been listening to? Uh, so Fanatical Prospecting is one uh, by Jeb Blount. That's all, next on my list. Uh, I won't mention the one I just finished because I did not like it at all. And then the other one is there's a book that I'm excited to read coming out by a guy named Andy Foote. He's a LinkedIn influencer all about LinkedIn hacks and LinkedIn uh, tactics uh, for salespeople. And I'm like, that's up my alley. <laughs> cool. Very cool. I'm not reading any books. Um, <laughs> I'm doing Bible studies though. So I guess I'm reading. Oh, that's oh okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, the book. Don't write that off. That's awesome. The book. The book. The book. The book. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Javier, right. you got a rapid fire question for us? Oh, you went Javier. All right. Oh, oh I, uh, Jeff, why don't you go? Cause I don't think of one. I can go Jeff. If you still need a minute. Yeah, go ahead. Too. Morning person, night person. Night definitely not a morning person. <laughs> I'm struggling with this a little bit more. I, I definitely used to be way more of a night person uh, and I probably still am, but you know, with two little ones running around, I get tired faster. And train so I, I'm, I'm not, uh, great train. Them. I'm not okay. quite staying up as late as I used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be me. I have to switch once uh, my baby girl gets here. So <laughs> no, no, you sleep when, when she sleeps. That's the rule. You don't get, you don't get to choose. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that night here as well. <laughs> Jeff, you got one? Um, yeah. Uh, why not? We'll go, we'll go the food question again. Um, favorite meat on your taco. Like whether you're not, you're going to. Carnitas. All right. I'm a barbacoa guy. I love barbacoa. I'm like a vanilla kind of person. So like chicken. You want, van you want vanilla on it? <laughs> like There's I'm super vanilla. The, you guys nothing, are all yeah. fancy with your like carnitas and shit. Nothing I'm, wrong like, with an El Pastor, you know? Yeah. I'm I do I'm like between... an El Pastor. I do like an El Pastor. I'll take that. That's chicken. That's pork. Oh, yeah. It, well, actually. Oh, boy. <laughs> Don't bite kids. Right. We have a hard end. We have a hard end. Yeah. Go, go, go. In between chicken or fried fish. All right. I will I got one. And then uh, we'll let the person that made the biggest impact on your life that's not related to you. An easy question. Hmm. Impact on your life. Biggest impact on my life. Uh, we'll say Nick Mirich, Hidware USA. Okay. Steven? Not related. 
I know. Mm. It's not a rapid fire question. It's too hard. Tim Hill says he doesn't like vanilla tacos. <laughs> Coffee flavored. <laughs> I don't know. I don't uh, have. I mean, I, I have a good core group of friends, and I don't want to choose one over the other. So yeah. I'm, okay. I'm going to say my my core. I got like a core three hey, like no. guys. That all right? Are cool. Back. Um, I'll just go with um, it's my my navy brothers. Yeah, and sisters. There you go. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. Sweet. All right. Sweet. All right. Well, look, guys, this <laughs> phenomenal broadcast was brought to you today. This was a really good discussion. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully those listening got some uh, some good tidbits out of it as well. But uh, it was brought to you today by Tervis. You know, you can go check them out at TervisPromos.com. They added uh, stainless to their well-established line about two years ago with the goal of being better than the competition by utilizing state-of-the-art custom 360-degree UV printing uh, available in four different sizes, 12, 20, 30 ounce or 40, or 24-ounce uh, water bottle. Uh, and now they've got 24, 30, or 40 ounce wide mouth bottles as well. So you can slip those ice cubes in the cups uh, without any issues. Five year warranty, 18 8 copper lined, vacuum insulated to keep your drinks eight hours hot or 24 hours cold. Always love, uh, you know, we're, we're coming into, you know, hotter, warmer weather, spring, summer. And uh, it's always great to jump back in the car with a, a cup of, it still has plenty of ice in it. So uh, definitely go check them out at tervispromos.com. You won't be sorry that you did. Uh, give them a shout out, tell them we said hi. Uh, that'll be the end of it, guys. I really appreciate it. Javier, you were awesome, man. Thanks appreciate for y'all. Thank Thanks you. Javier. Yep, absolutely. All right, guys, take care and enjoy. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Promo Corner's Industry Insider. For more great content from industry thought leaders, including podcasts, blogs, and videos, visit promocorner.com.